Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to our annual board meeting via Zoom. Thank you for attending today. And I would just like to welcome everyone. And so I would also like to introduce our executive committee for the physical year 19, 2019 to 2020. Um, that is Shanna White, the board chair, myself, Christy Sigmunds, the vice chair, Todd Ashworth, secretary treasurer, Don Brown, Matt Falal, and Karen Harrington. Hey guys, I'm Todd Ashworth. I want to take a moment and uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of um, organization. I want to take a minute to recognize the board of directors for the upcoming 2020-2021 uh, year. Um, myself, Todd Ashworth, along with Jordan Bost, Jorge Collado, Dewey Harris, Stuart Mull, Sherry Shepard, Chief Vidal Seit, Chief Thurman Wisnett, uh, Linda Baker, Sheriff Don Brown, Bess Fuller, Penny Huffman, Judge Robert Monix Jr., Christy Sigmund, Mark Teague, Lisa Yang, Michael Blackburn, Joy Klein, Karen Harrington, Chief Eric Lofton, our DA Scott Riley, Angela Simmons, and Shanna White. We certainly couldn't do uh, any of the work without the wonderful staff we have. We're so fortunate to have such a wonderful team. Our executive director is Adrian Updike. Uh, Melissa Ammons is our victim advocate. Amber Benson serves as a forensic interviewer. Aurora Del Torre is our Spanish interpreter. Connie Ingart is our community outreach and education coordinator. Karen Harrington is our mental health therapist. Marisol Hernandez is a licensed practical nurse. Dakota Sperling, our administrative assistant. And of course, Julia Wetmore, our pediatric nurse practitioner. Okay, um, this is Christy again, and I would like to present the September minutes to be voted on. Has everyone had a chance to look at those? Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, all in favor, well, I guess we're doing it via Zoom. Okay. Adrian, do we need a uh, a verbal vote or everybody can do it via Zoom? Everybody can complete the voting um, by um, completing the poll. Okay. I, I'm clicking on yes or no for the button, and then um, we can uh, approve. Okay. Still showing poll in progress. So I, I'm assuming we have a yes to approve the minutes? We do. Yes. Okay. So the September minutes have been approved. Okay, got it. Okay. So, I believe Bess is next. Okay, I'll turn it over. Okay, thank you. Um, hey, everybody. I just want to um, say, and I'm glad to see everyone. Hope everyone's staying safe. Um, I am going to be your chairman for the 21. 2021 Denim and Diamonds event. We're very excited um, about this event. We were sad that we had to cancel for uh, 2020, but 
um, as everything has changed, so is going to be the refreshed and exciting new um, version of Denim and Diamonds. First, I want to um, thank my committee members, Michael Blackburn, Joy Klein, Linda Diciani, Diciani, I'm sorry, Linda, Aline Horgan, Shailen Ladd, Lisa Ridgeway, Brooks Sigmund, Christy Sigmund, Mark Teague, and Shauna White. So we are, this year, our um, event is going to take place at Market on Main in downtown Hickory. We are uh, very excited about all the things that um, they are willing to do for us for this event. It will be held on April 24th, and we are in the process, thanks to uh, board member Jordan Bost, we are doing some refreshing of all of our marketing materials. So you will be um, seeing some of these things in the not too distant future. So if you have any questions about denim and diamonds or um, what we're working on for the committee, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And again, look forward to an exciting event for 2021. That's April the 24th um, of next year. I'm Connie, Connie I think Lark, right and our work is the liaison from the staff with our Prevention Council, which I'm very thankful for. Dee Dee Baker, Linda Baker, Andrea Benfield. We keep um, Helen Brigham and Kathy Dillon as honorary members. Sarah Chase, Avery Crouch, Christy Dillard, Haley Hoke, Melissa Kirkus, Becky Less, Emily Miller, Tanya Moss, Kristen Parrott, Linda Robinette, Robin Sands, and Barbara Williams. The purpose of this council is to provide support to the CAPC throughout the year. And we meet monthly from August through May. Last year, we helped with the following events. We have a month sale that we raise funds for the Erling Sigmund Fund. And this fund is solely for the benefit of children served by the DSS. Uh, we held the vigil. This committee provided the flowers and also participated in the ceremony. We had the Children's Protection Award. We did solicit nominations and awarded this um, award to Vanessa Leinberger virtually. We weren't able to plan an event like we normally do. We didn't get to do the pinwheels, but we sure bought them and had them displayed throughout the community and this committee helped with that. And lastly, in April, we did CPS um, Child Protective Services appreciation where we collected items that we donated and, and made up goodie bags for all the members of that. So thank you so much. Hey guys, I'm Shanna. Um, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I get the honor of thanking several people who we wouldn't be what we are today without. Uh, first, our grantors. Um, these are the organizations that we've applied to for grants throughout the year and were accepted. So take a moment to look through that list. Um, over the next several pages, Dakota is going to change. There are over 270 either couples or individuals that we would like to thank for donating to the CAPC for this year. We certainly couldn't do it without each and every one of the donors, and we greatly appreciate everything that everybody was willing to do. And we have a special recognition, I'm sorry, recognition to our Ray of Hope um, partners. These are seven people who give monthly to the CAPC. Um, Yvonne Ames, Wendy Klein, Adrian, Randy Tolbert, Kristen Brown, Christopher Moore, and Mary Patton. Thank you so much for your continued support. We could not do this without all of our volunteers. I'm not going to name them all, but you see their names on the screen. They are vital to our work here. They've served on our board of directors, facilitated darkness to light classes, helped with our mom sale, cared for the children while parents are in classes, prepared meals, helped with mailings and data entry, served on the prevention council, and helped with all of our public events, including Denim and Diamond and Vigil. Volunteers have maintained our butterfly garden, 
help with Camp Dragonfly and clean our toys for the children. So thank you so much to all of our volunteers. Hi everyone, <clears throat> I'm Karen Henson and I'm the therapist here at CAPC. Our professional advisory council is comprised of supervisory representatives of all of the agencies represented on the multidisciplinary team or MDT, as well as service providers here from the CAPC. The purpose of PAC is to review the purpose and role of the MDT, to review our MDT investigative protocol biannually, to identify MDT needs related to training, resources, gaps, et cetera. They provide a professional expertise related to their role in their agency. They're also a venue for problem solving and, and addressing any system issues. They act as a conduit of information between PAC and their agency. And they also promote the interest of CAPC and its partner agencies in the community. So we thank all of our participants um, on PAC. Hi, good morning. I'm Amber and I am a forensic interviewer and I also facilitate our multidisciplinary team. I would like to take a moment to recognize the names that you see on the screen and to acknowledge all of their hard work and dedication. Our multidisciplinary team is comprised of multiple disciplines that fall under the umbrella of child maltreatment and also provide services. Those members include the CAPC staff, which is mental health, um, victim advocacy, medical, as well as forensic interviewing and admin. And we also have the district attorney's office, the Department of Social Services, as well as various law enforcement agencies, which include Catawba County Sheriff's Office, Claremont Police Department, Conover Police Department, Hickory Police Department, Longview Police Department, Maiden Police Department, and Newton Police Department. The purpose of our team is to come together to share ideas and input, to review cases, and also to ensure that we are providing the best services that we can to the children and families that we serve. Thank you so much. I have the um, wonderful opportunity to recognize um, Matt Pala. So I've written it down, Matt, so I can make sure that I say everything that I want to say to you, um, a voice for not only our board members, but for the staff. Matt, thank you so much for volunteering to serve on the Children's Advocacy Center Board and Executive Committee over the last five years. I know for you that that was an add-on to the many other things that you do, including your career, your family, your work in your church, and your work in the mission field, and lots of other volunteer opportunities in our community. And I appreciate that you were willing to serve with us. Thank you for keeping your promise to help not only me, but all of the CAPC staff as we made the transition to the new location with new leadership. Whenever you were in the building, you went from office to office and you talked to each one of us. We wanted to know how we were doing, if there's anything we needed, and if there's anything that you could personally help us with. Thank you for knowing that for me, next to my faith and my family, this work is my passion. Thank you for bringing your passion. I knew I was gonna get emotional. <laughs> Thank you for bringing your passion, your intellect, your humor, your insight, experience, and resources to our board table. Thank you for teaching me, talking with me, challenging me, and holding me accountable. Thank you for letting me learn my mistakes, learn from my mistakes, and create a safe place for me to improve. As a new director, I needed you, and I appreciate that you used all your experience, skills, and knowledge, and education to move not only our organization forward, but to move me forward in my position. You have impacted my life and our organizations in ways that I, I cannot express, and I will always be grateful. Thank you for your service, for your leadership, and your guidance. We will miss you, Matt. 
It has totally been my pleasure to serve with this group. I still say this is the best organization in Catawba County to serve with and to support. Yes. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Thank you so much. Adrian, you're still muted. Oh, I was so ready not to talk anymore. It would be difficult to think that there was life before the pandemic, but there was. And at the beginning of our year, we worked very hard um, to go through the reaccreditation process with the National Children's Alliance. We submitted an application, we had a site visit, and we passed and we were fully accredited through them. We also started working with our board and a trained facilitator to develop a three-year strategic plan. And as you can see from our numbers, we were well on our way to providing services to more children and families this fiscal year than we did last year. And then COVID hit. Our numbers decreased drastically in March, April, May, and June. And at the end of our fiscal year, we served 26% less children and families than we did last year at the same time. Reports of child abuse were down across the nation. Even our local paper ran an article titled, National Experts See No Proof of Child Abuse Surged Amid the Pandemic. Well, those of us who serve in the field knew this what this pandemic would mean for vulnerable children. Children out of school, isolated, from caring adults is a perfect storm for abuse. Because we know that 90% of abuse happens by someone the child knows, and nearly all abuse happens in the home. More than two thirds of the nation's child abuse reports come from teachers, law enforcement, social services, mental, and mental health and medical professionals. The nation's 900 children advocacy centers sent their statistics to NCA for the first six months of 2020 and nationally CAC served 40,000 fewer kids than we did at the same time last year. 40,000 kids who teach, whose teachers never were able to ask what's wrong, talk to them after class. 40,000 children whose coaches never had a chance to notice something off about their attitude. 40,000 children whose, whose doctors never had a chance to notice a strange bruise or mark on their body. And 40,000 children whose aunts and uncles or grandparents might not see them enough to confirm a feeling of concern that they had for the child. And as the restrictions lift, lifted in June, our numbers steadily increased just as we expected. When the pandemic hit in March, 2020, the dramatic economic slowdown threatened the resources that we needed to serve kids. All fundraising events were suspended beginning March due to COVID. April is the month when the CAPC focuses on prevention and building awareness about our services in the community. April is also the month that we host our annual Denim and Diamond fundraiser. The CAPC raises almost half of our fiscal year donations in the third and fourth quarter. It's enough to make you lose hope, but we have never been about losing hope. On the contrary, we are all about hope. The CAPC is an integral part of our community's child abuse response system. Our doors never closed. No phone call was ever left unanswered. We never said we can't do this, but instead, what do we need to do to provide these services and keep everyone safe? We made immediate and drastic changes in operations and procedures to ensure the safety and well being of the staff, our MDD partners, and clients during the pandemic while continuing to ensure access to services. Our community responded abundantly to any request of need that we made. 
They came forward and brought everything that we needed. Board members, current and past, came forward and helped secure essential funding made available through the federal government and other resources. Our ray of hope through this pandemic was found in the people in our community and in each one of you as board members. Thank you so much. The next slide shows um, an analysis of our income for fiscal year 1920. It um, identifies the federal grants that we received, state funding, um, some general grants that we wrote to cover some of our programs. Our fundraising and donations split between business and individuals, program income through our medical and mental health services and our social service contribution as well as other income. Our fundraising summary for this fiscal year, our holiday ma mailing was um, incredibly generous from, from individuals and businesses in our community. Our denim and diamonds was canceled, but we had secured some sponsor funding prior to the cancellation of the event. And um, when we reached out to them, they said, keep what we've given you, use it the way you need it. And so they were so very generous in, um, in helping us to meet our needs. And then we um, raised some money through our pinwheels. At this time, we have our year in review in pictures.
Just a preview for some upcoming events. April is our prevention month. We will be doing our pinwheel and vigil ceremony together at Zara B Baker Park. And um, also we'll be hosting our evening of hope. We're so excited of this. We have our very own slide for Denim and Diamonds. Just a reminder for everyone that it is um, Saturday, April 24th at Market on Main from 6.30 to 10. Mark your calendars and we'll be sending out our save, to, save the dates soon. I think that um, I'm gonna ask Christy to close us out. Okay, I just wanted to say thank you so much for attending our annual meeting. And we are gonna have this posted on Facebook and on YouTube. So please look for that. And we appreciate everything you do and I hope everyone has a great day and we'll call the meeting concluded.